wetting her body. She's not that keen on it, to be very honest. She doesn't like her neck being washed. Um, but she's fine everywhere else. You can see all that dust that's coming off. She's absolutely filthy. She's, um, like I say, she's not been touched for like six weeks really now. So that's a lot of dirt to build up. She's had no rug on in the field. Um, so she's been allowed to get as much as she likes. is so dirty. I'm, um, I'm going to use these brilliant gloves. They're called Hands On from Lemure, well, Horse Help. And what I'm going to do is put some concentrate shampoo into my hands. Um, I'm just going to really, really rub it into her body. Um, what's great about this is that they've got little, like, little, um, like prickly bits on them, not prickly, but they're pointy. I don't know how to describe them really, but it just really helps you get into the coat. And you can see she actually likes this. It's almost like a massage for her. And you can see how I'm really getting into all that grime. She says, oh, that's lovely. Keep doing that, William. And look at all that filth that's coming up. Brilliant. So I accidentally deleted some of the footage, um, which is quite annoying, but before this step I actually put a decent amount of the bright white shampoo into Diana's mane and tail. I always do this at the very beginning, um, so it gives it plenty of time to sit and lift any of the dirt out of um, her mane and tail. Um, I'll keep it in until the very end. Now regarding manes, I always wash their manes as I think a clean mane looks far better than a dirty mane. It really doesn't bother me for plaiting. So much dirt. Mmm, look at that. Ooh, yes. So that's very nice. Thank you, William. <laughs> so yes, as much as it gets the horses clean, it also gives them a really lovely massage as well. One of Diana's finest features are her um, four lovely white socks. Um, I've pre-treated them with a quick wash with the bright white shampoo from Horse Health and now I'm going to use a concentrate on the brush to really get them lovely and white. And don't be shocked when they turn purple because that is what we want. We need to really get into those heels, get that lovely and white. This is a lovely soft brush so it doesn't hurt them at all. And just make sure you get all, all of the white bits covered. Okay, so I've got all the shampoo on now where I want to. Um, we're going to let everything sit for five minutes and then we're going to rinse it all out. So I've let everything sit for five minutes now, and if you come and have a look, you'll see how everything's gone and really like rich purple, and that's because it's all sunk into the mane and set. Uh, you can see it's done the same on her legs as well, and on her body. Look, she's got a lovely silver mane now, beautiful and clean. Her body's lovely and silver. And then her legs are so white. To finish, I'm going to wash her off with the Botanica cleansing wash. Um, I put about four, four to five capfuls um, of it in the water bucket. Um, it's really great because if they've got any cuts or grazes um, or any scurfy skin it's brilliant for just cleansing it and making it really nice and clean and it also smells great as it's got lavender oils in.
can see now her legs are all lovely and clean. Um, I've towel dried them and what I'm going to use now to get them really white is some white chalk. Um, I mix that into like a little paste and then I sponge it on. Right, so this is the consistency of the paste. I don't know if you can see very well. Um, so it's still firm and then when it's on my sponge it looks like that. And then all I'm going to do is just wipe down her leg. We don't want it too watery, we want it to be able to stick. They're really great because they're very durable um, and they lie really flat, which is what we want, as if we've got any creases. Um, you're at risk of putting pressure on your horse's leg, um, which can create swelling. So we've got to make sure everything's lovely and smooth. And I'm also wrapping away from my horse's head. That way the pressure goes onto the cannon bone instead of onto the tendons and ligaments, which is not what we want. Um, so for the bandage, the same um, rule applies. I start at the top and I'm bandaging away from my horse's head to keep the pressure off their leg, off their tendons. So I'm wrapping around twice on the foreleg because they are slightly shorter than the hind leg, the cannon bones. So to make everything equal, I just add an extra turn. Now, moving my way down, again making sure everything's lovely and flat. Don't want any creases. Keep it nice and as straight as you possibly can, your lines. Um, obviously you'll have to go on a bit of an angle so you can get lower. And then we go all the way to the bottom as this is a stable bandage. Underneath the fetlock. And make a lovely little V in the centre. Now you can see these bandages are not the cleanest I um, regret to say but you should really be using clean bandages to prevent any muck and dirt getting onto those lovely clean legs that you've spent so long trying to get clean. So we finished at the top which is exactly what we wanted and then we just put our Velcro on, like so. And that is the foreleg. So, moving on to the hind leg, the same rule applies as the foreleg. Um, you get your pad, wrap it away from your horse's head, make sure everything's lovely and flat, lovely and smooth. You get your bandage, um, but this time, when we start at the top, instead of wrapping around twice, we're only going to wrap around the once, and that is because the hind leg, cannon bone, is slightly longer, so that means, hopefully, by doing this, we are going to finish at the top. Keep a nice even pressure all the way down even distances between each turn. We're going to go to the bottom, below our fetlock, and then create our lovely V, and then come back up again, keep a nice even distance, even pressure, and then we will finish at the top, like that. Run our hands down, make sure it's all lovely and smooth, and there's our bandage. <laughs>